So the role of First Lady is complex. Uh, we know, you know, it's not in the Constitution, so each First Lady has had to figure out for herself what the job would entail. From the beginning, people kind of thought of it as a wifely role, uh, more or less, so it's tracked along the years with how Americans saw wives. And as women have gained uh, in the workplace and in other spheres of life, the role of First Lady has changed along with it in some ways, but it's, it still carries some of that tradition from uh, a century ago. Roosevelt makes it clear that she intends to be more than a mere ornament on the White House reception line. One of the First Ladies who was really a, a mold breaker was Eleanor Roosevelt. She did so many dynamic things. We know her husband was in office for a really long time, so she had to figure out for herself what she would do with the role of First Lady. Eleanor Roosevelt invited women to cover her press conferences, and she made them female only, which forced newsrooms around the country to hire women because they wanted to cover this First Lady. And so some of the first women who got political reporting jobs were hired because of Eleanor Roosevelt's decision. We were at a pretty low ebb of civilization. Each of the rooms in the family quarters of the White House has a special personality. Lady Bird Johnson is a really interesting first lady. So first of all, she's you know really petite and uh, demure, but we found out after her time in the White House that she was such a force. Um, one, she helped her husband get elected. She took a train through the South and went to states that he could not go to um, and talk to people about the Civil Rights Act and that sort of thing. And she had a career in communications before her husband came to the White House. So we have these really great recordings of her um, basically dressing her husband down. Uh, during the statement, you were a little breathless and it was too much looking down, and I think it was a little too fast. Nancy Reagan was an iconic first lady, and people often thought of her as a gatekeeper for her husband. Um, so she made headlines during his time in the White House when she's said to have gotten his chief of staff, who she did not get along with, fired. Um, so people did not want to get on Nancy Reagan's bad side. Ellen said I should say something, but I'll never get through it. <laughs> contributions women make in every aspect of life. Hillary Clinton was a very interesting first lady um, in the 1990s. We saw her come into the White House and for the first time she as first lady did not have an office in the East Wing but she had an office in the West Wing not far from the Oval Office where her husband would be and she was going to be not just first lady but a political advisor in that role and running healthcare policy for the country. And she you know, made an effort, traveled around the country to talk about her ideas and lead that effort. And there was severe blowback against this idea of having a first lady who would you know, sort of go beyond what the role had been in terms of shaping policy in a very public and upfront way. And we saw by the end of her husband's time in the White House that she had re, you know, retreated back to a more traditional role for a first lady. We get to work on what we're passionate about. Uh, and I think that that's uh, something that I would encourage all first ladies to uh, uh, never uh, lose sight of. So Michelle Obama has been an interesting first lady and cultural figure. In some ways, she has been ubiquitous, right? You turn on the television and she's not just on um, CNN or your news network, but she's done appearances on Nickelodeon and she's on late night shows and daytime talk shows and magazine covers. And so she's really taken the sort of idea that as first lady, she has a spotlight and she can thereby influence culture through messaging. And sometimes that's in serious ways as we've seen her doing during the 2016 campaign. Our motto is, when they go low, we go high. But we've also seen her do skits and um, hula hoop on the South Lawn and that sort of thing to push the messages that she wants to. So in the future, it'll be interesting to see what the role becomes. We are at a moment now where we could potentially have the first 
first gentleman in the White House, and so it causes questions about whether some of the more gendered aspects of the role begin to fall away. We've had first ladies ask the question, is, you know, should it be a paid job with some official duties? And I think the interesting question really is not should they receive a salary, but should they be able to work for a salary at their job that they might have already had? And I think we'll continue to see uh, the role um, evolve and change and who knows?